What is going on YouTube? Fascinating graveyard. Today we're at the Lithuanian National Cemetery here in uh, Justice, Illinois. I mean, basically we're in Chicago land, come on. This is Chicago. Anyways, today we are here to visit the grave of Maurice Tillett. Uh, he is commonly referred to as the French Angel. Uh, he was a very popular wrestler here in the United States in the 40s. But he is widely believed to be the, uh, I guess you could say, the inspiration for the Shrek character. Uh, this has never been confirmed, but it's quite obvious that the animators at uh, whatever, Pixar or Disney Studios, whatever, it's quite obvious that they modeled Shrek uh, after that man. So Maurice was born on October 23rd, 1903 in the Ural Mountains in Russia, uh, but his parents were French. So later on, after things started getting a little too dicey over there, they all went back to France, and uh, that's where Maurice grew up. His father died uh, when he was pretty young, so his mother was there to uh, raise uh, her child by herself. Now, the nickname The Angel was given to him by his mother because he had a very angelic face as a child. Now, this guy was born normally. Uh, he had a pretty normal upbringing until he started getting around the age of 20. Then he started noticing that his hands and his feet were growing uh, really fast. And his head too, his extremities. And they took him to the doctor and uh, he was um, diagnosed with a condition called acromegaly which basically means uh, gigantism of the extremities. Uh, this disease uh, uh, has uh, affected uh, a couple famous people. Uh, Andre the Giant, uh, he had acromegaly. And uh, Richard Keel, he's the guy that played Jaws in the James Bond movies. He had that disease as well. So originally, Maurice, who was a very intelligent man, he wanted to be a, a lawyer. And he had went to school in France and graduated in everything five years. And by that time, his disease was progressing to the point where it had affected his voice, making his voice sound like kind of ogreish and deep. And his appearance would kind of startle people a little bit. So he figured, he's like, yeah, this ain't going to work because it's, this is going to affect my career and all this and that. So he kind of gave that up and uh, joined the Navy, the French Navy. So he worked as an engineer on a sub for about five years. After he gets out of the service, uh, one of his friends told him, he's like, you know, listen, uh, you got kind of a look to you. He goes, you ever tried wrestling? He's like, no, it's never thought about it. He's like, well, let's, let's give it a go. So took some lessons and he started getting a little bit popular in France as the French angel, but then uh, World War II happened and Maurice uh, fled to the United States. So he comes over here and continues on as his character, the French angel. And uh, he was uh, widely popular uh, in the early 40s. Uh, he might have been the most popular wrestler here in the United States. Uh, he wrestled in the, I believe it was the AWA. What is that? The American Wrestling Association? Doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. And uh, beyond his appearance, uh, man was very intelligent. Uh, he spoke 14 languages, not fluently, but uh, some of them were fluent. Uh, but he had a, uh, I guess, a, a rough understanding of at least 14 different languages. Um, he was a poet and nobody would even know it. Huh? How'd you like that one? But a tortured existence this man uh, led. And as his uh, disease uh, kept on, uh, you know, getting worse and worse, it started uh, affecting his health. Uh, he later on, like I believe in like the mid-40s, 
doctors were telling him, hey, man, you're not going to be able to wrestle anymore. It's, it's affecting your joints. Uh, he's in constant pain. And so he basically retired from wrestling. Uh, his last match was in 1953. And uh, he died September 4th, 1954. Uh, he died of heart disease. Now, his story doesn't end there. No, past the Shrek thing, check this out. So as he was like, you know, I guess on his deathbed, uh, his friend, uh, Patrick Kelly, I believe his name is, he's like a business partner of his, he asked him if he could make a, uh, a death mask of his, of his face. And Maurice is like, sure, go for it. So they made three or four death masks. And uh, he, his friend kept a couple of them for a while. And then before he died, he donated a, a couple of them. So one, I believe, is in a uh, museum in Iowa. And the other one might be somewhere else yonder. But check this out. So him and his friend loved to just, um, you know, because Maurice didn't have that many friends. But he would go to Patrick's house and they would play chess, right? And after he died... Uh, his friend Patrick had uh, bought an electronic chess set. And an electronic chess set is you would have it, um, you would set it to where, whatever level you were, and then it would just be all, you know, I guess, computer moves. So this guy claims that uh, the mask, the death mask of Maurice Tillett uh, was haunted I don't know if you want to use that exact word, but Maurice's spirit would come when the mask was around. For instance, one time this guy was playing chess with the electronic chess board and Maurice's mask, face mask, death mask, whatever you want to call it, was on a table right next to the electronic chess board. And when he starts playing the electronic chess board, he notices that the board makes a move that the computer would never know to make but this was a move that Maurice loved to make practically at every game they played it was some kind of a 18th century uh, opening chess move that a French uh, master chess player uh, invented so he also claims that the chessboard would work even when it wasn't plugged in. And supposedly he had shown people, uh, you know, like, hey, look, look at this chessboard. I don't know if the chessboard actually worked without being plugged in around other people, but this guy swore up and down. He said, Maurice still plays chess with me even 25 years after his death, and there is no other way uh, to explain it other than it's got to be him. This thing's not plugged in. And the electronic chessboard, it plays chess just like he used to do. Now, I don't know if you guys believe that, but I always find those kinds of stories about uh, ghosts and haunting fascinating. I always find them fascinating. That was close. <laughs> Anyways... Uh, here is the grave of the angel Maurice Tillett. And uh, he is buried with his friend Carolus Pozella, and they both died on the same day. That is uh, very, very odd. And as you can see right there, there's this picture. Friends whom even death could impart. Let's fix this. Uh, okay, there you go. Yeah, you're spinning. There you go. Uh, a very, uh, very interesting story, and uh, exactly uh, why I have a channel like this on the side first. Stories such as this, so 
Yeah. You know, past the uh, whole uh, Shrek thing, because everybody, you know, looks at this guy and like, oh, that's Shrek, that's Shrek. You got to imagine. That's got to be a very torturous existence. You know, very difficult to find a woman to love you, to accept you for who you are. And I don't know if he had a girlfriend or whatever, but, you know, it's got to be, uh, it's got to be a very lonely life that he led, you know? And I don't think people uh, oftentimes think about that. They just think like, oh, Shrek, Shrek's lovable, uh, you know, all that. Well, you know, to be uh, with that disease, and it's, uh, I'm sure it's, it can cause you uh, pain, embarrassment. I mean, I don't know. Anyways, uh, rest easy, my friend Maurice Tillit and uh, his friend Corollis. Okay, guys, I am out of here. I will catch up with you on the next one, guys. Have a good one. Peace out.